All right, welcome back for another tutorial. Here we're going to look at something called flow maps. These are pretty cool. I just learned about them today. I'm going to show you how to make them in Shader Graph or how to use them in Shader Graph in Unity. So what a flow map does is it's distorting the UVs to give a sort of flow to the texture. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is create our flow maps. So first thing, go to this website and download this flow map painter. I'll show you what it does. It's really pretty nifty. So I painted this one already. But basically, you just change the size and the strength up here. And then you just move your mouse around and create a new flow. And then when you're done with that, you just uh, bake the texture and then put it into your Unity project. So you can do whatever you want. You can just kind of go crazy with it, and it'll make some cool little flow pattern for you and that's what we need that's all so this guy made this part like extremely easy so all you got to do is make your flow texture and bake it and back in unity will so the other part of the texture I just made a quick lava texture and in order to make them seamless all you got to do is go up to filter and do other offset in Photoshop and just offset it by however much and then if there's seams in the middle then it's not tileable but if there's no seams, mine's not that perfect, but it's all right. Then, so if there's no seams, it, it is title, so it works um, seamlessly. Okay, so now I'm going to walk through kind of this node network to show you what everything does. Okay, so the first thing up here, this is our flow map, our texture 2D asset feeding into a sample texture 2D. All right, it's nothing too complicated. That's just the flow map we took from this friendly fellow over here. And then all we're doing here is just a basic tiling and offset and multiply. Multiplying time by a constant, by a vector 2. So this is how fast it's moving in the x and how fast it's moving in the y. So you can see it's scrolling over here. So we change it to 0, it doesn't scroll at all. So that's all that these ones are doing here is scrolling the flow map. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but it adds a nice effect to my lava over here. Okay, so then what we're doing here is we're masking the red and the green out, or the red, masking the blue out. If you made them in this tool, I don't think you actually need to do that. Yeah, it works just fine also, but if you run into problems, um, you can try this and it might uh, it might fix it. But you probably, you might not need it, basically. Okay, what we're doing here is we're multiplying this by a rather small constant in order to get a darker color. And, okay, now this little section here is a little bit interesting. I took most of this from this Shader Forge diagram. I just kind of adapted it to Shader Graph. So it's not that, it's not super complicated, but hopefully I explain it well enough. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're multiplying time by half. So there's several of these little guys that are floating around that are just random uh, vector 1s or vector 2s. You can adjust all of these to get kind of a different flow effect um, with what you're doing. So if you don't like what you got, just try messing with a few of these numbers and see what they do. Okay, so we have that. We have our multiplied time in vector 1. And so this fraction node is a little bit unique. It, what it's doing is it's grabbing all of the decimal places um, from the previous node. So as it cycles through here, you know, it goes from one second to 1.1 to 1.2, and then all the way up to two, and then it gets 2.1, 2.2. So this is only taking the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3s, et cetera. And so that's useful because we don't want an enormous number from the time going into our uh, nodes over here. And so then all we do over here is we're doing pretty much the same thing, just adding 0.5 so that it goes at a different time. You can see it blinking half a second later. It's bum, 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 you know. So that's what that's what that's doing. Okay. So then we are remapping this. So you normally on the on this one we have a zero to one remap here. Or a net sorry, a negative 0.5 to 0.5. But that's not it didn't look super good to me. It didn't blend nicely together. And so I changed it to 0.4 to 1. You can adjust that a few if you don't like it. So what happens if we do zeros here is we have a 
more uh, jumpiness kind of. So I like to add it to 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 so it's not as abrupt, the changes there. You can see them still a little bit, but it's okay. All right, so then what we're doing here is we are, we have both of these remap nodes that are just blinking at different times. And then we're multiplying them with our previous channel mask multiplied texture. So you can't see anything on it, so might as well just make them small. But then what we're doing is going into time, vector two, multiply, tiling and offset to an add. Okay. So you might not actually need those. I don't know if this is doing anything at the moment. Let me see. Okay, so this is moving the texture very slightly at point two. So we don't actually need these ones over here. You just need one of them because they're doing the same thing. Just kidding. They're not doing the same thing. This is what is actually making it um, animate. Uh, so if we turned this guy off all the way and this guy off all the way, it's still flowing a bit. Actually, I think I was right the first time. We don't need don't need these ones. Or you don't need these ones. Take your pick. They're doing the same thing. Okay, so then what we're doing is we're feeding this into the UV of a sample texture. And I put the texture that I made in Photoshop, this guy, into the texture node. So we've got it scrolling here, and then every second we got a jump, right? Or every two seconds or so, based on the scale factor. We got a jump. So we don't like the jump. So we pull them into a lerp to blend them. But if we delete this one, we still have jump. So we drag this guy over and it blends nicely. So what this one's doing is it's taking the first fraction node um, and taking 0.5 minus the first fraction node. And then we're dividing it by that same 0.5. These are magic numbers. Don't mess with this one because if you do, it gets weird. So like if we change it to 1. It's still working. If we change it to zero, you can see it gets a little bit funky. So I'll just leave it at 0.5 because that's what works. And then the absolute, we're just getting the absolute value and putting that into the type T. I don't know exactly what that does, but it makes it work. So there you go. We've got this plugged into the albedo and the emission. Uh, just for looks, really. I mean, you can do whatever you need to for your texture to make it look like it's doing what you want it to. So yeah, that's how you how you make use flow maps in Shadowgraph. Hopefully it's useful and hopefully you make some cool stuff with it. Thanks for watching.